Drive and News 12 is proud to be an official drop-off location. Drop off a new unwrapped toy at our studios during normal business hours. Make a child's holiday brighter with News 12 and Toys for Tots. Hey, Jill, what's the matter? Man, this is name change. It's stressing me out. Everyone will know we still specialize in Medicare. Yeah, I know that, but what about this? Are you 64.com? You're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. Tonight we're taking a closer look at a gang issue that's no longer just an inner city problem. It's spreading. The unit overseeing the problem says it's impacting our youth in more ways than one. But first tonight, Aiken Public Safety releasing new details about the Sunday shooting outside of the Whiskey Road Walmart in Aiken. Police say three suspects were in the back of the store talking about 10 minutes before the shooting started. One suspect wearing a bright colored hoodie went to a blue Kia where a fight broke out with the driver. The police report says another suspect in a black hoodie raised a pistol firing one shot and the suspect at the driver's door also fired twice towards the driver. Later, one person did show up at the Aiken Regional Medical Centers with a gunshot wound. Aiken Public Safety says they could be connected to that case. Meanwhile, some Aiken mothers are concerned about safety after this parking lot shooting in the middle of the afternoon. Hallie Turner live in our newsroom for us. So, Hallie, what are they saying to you? Well, just before it was all said and done, two of the suspects got into a Ford Fusion while the suspect wearing a colored hoodie took off on foot towards Burger King. People tell me their sense of security is slowly drifting away with every shooting. Laura Kanegi says this Walmart on Whiskey Road is the one store she went to for everything growing up. That was the Walmart. Prescriptions got there, picked up dinner, went shopping. Everything came from that Walmart. Now, with Sunday's most recent shooting, she says things are changing. Almost everybody in Aiken has to go to Walmart, but you have to fear for your life now just to buy your milk. There have been two shootings here within six months. One inside the store, seriously injuring 13-year-old Ashton Reichert in June. We shouldn't have to be scared just to provide for our family. And she's not alone. This anonymous mother says she left the store just 30 minutes before the shooting started Sunday afternoon. We had just left the Whiskey Road Walmart and pulled into our driveway when I opened up Facebook and found out that there was a shooting. We were right there with the kids. It just happened. And with her own three kids, Laura says she's a regular in Walmart. We have to go every week. We have to get groceries for school to carry us through until the next week. And she's always careful about watching the clock. When the sun went down, I never went out. But apparently at 4, 30, 5 o'clock when the sun's still out, it's not safe anymore. And she wants her kids to know how things can change in the blink of an eye. I don't want them to be afraid of their own shadow, but realistically they need to be aware of their surroundings. They need to know what's going to happen, what could happen, and pay attention. Now, Walmart did release a statement saying, quote, while we don't publicly discuss security measures we take in our stores or parking lots, the safety of our associates and customers is our top priority. Thanks for that. The other shooting Hallie just mentioned happened at the same Walmart about five months ago when Ashton Reichard was shot inside the store. She was injured, but she survived. Turning to weather now, and we have some hot cold. Start to our, wind, our Tuesday, and you're going to need that jacket most of the day. High temps will still be close to 10 degrees below average for this time of year. Now, as we head into Wednesday and Thursday morning, that's when we're really going to be dropping our temperatures. We'll have much more on this cold outbreak in just about 10 minutes. New in the last 30 minutes, the 19-year-old wanted after the death of a 4-year-old boy who shot himself with an unsecured gun has been arrested. The Richmond County coroner says Ike Ryans died Sunday at Wellstar MCG Health, but the shooting happened November 12th at his home on Murphy Road. Both Ladarian Ryans and Brittany Ryans are now in custody for the death. Both face murder charges and five counts of second-degree cruelty to children. 
The GBI says two more teenagers are in the Thomasville Youth Detention Center arrested in connection to a deadly shooting of a Thompson 14-year-old. 15-year-old Rashawn Coleman and 14-year-old Darius Coleman arrested Friday and charged with murder, gang charges, and more. They joined three others in the case. Because of their ages, their mugshots are not available. 14-year-old Jonathan Johnson died on the 18th after a gunshot wound to the head. The GBI says it happened on Anderson Avenue. Law enforcement is not saying if any more arrests are on the way in this case, but the GBI is continuing its investigation. We also have new details tonight from SLED on the investigation involving a shooting between 18 county deputies and an armed suspect who was shot. They have identified the man at 30 year old, as 30-year-old Cody Talley. That shooting happened in Sally yesterday morning on Depot Avenue. Reports say a caller said he came to her home armed and left. Deputies found Talley. They say he refused to put down a shotgun and then walked away. He later put it down, but then put a hand behind his back and continued to refuse commands, they say. After getting hit with a beanbag round, Sled says he pointed a handgun at them and fired. And that's when deputies fired back. Tally was listed as stable. No one else was injured. But this is the third shooting in Aiken where an officer has had to fire their gun. Coming off the heels of a deadly holiday weekend, the Richmond County Gang Unit is talking about the rise in crime. In Augusta, investigators are looking into seven deadly shootings, a deadly arson, and a body found. These crimes span from November to just the other day on Thanksgiving Day. That's two in September, three in October, and four in November. Right now, as Will Rio tells us, investigators are not sure if these crimes are connected or gang-related. Inside the Special Operations Unit are some of the busiest investigators. Kyle Gould on the right is the sergeant in charge of the Richmond County Gang Unit. On the left is Patrick Brown, investigator with the Richmond County Gang Unit. My job is to put gang members in jail if they're committing criminal offenses. Investigators say the battle is only getting more difficult to fight. Do you guys feel like right now in Richmond County there is a gang issue? Yes, um, there, there is definitely an issue with these criminal street gangs. I think that a lot of uh, community leaders um, should be aware that there is a growing gang issue. Investigators within the sheriff's office say crimes ranging from homicide all the way down to misdemeanor offenses can be traced back to criminal street gangs across the region. Yeah, I would say a vast majority of the, the violent crime in this county, in Richmond County, is committed by members or associates of criminal street gangs. Um, it's far more than what the, you know, the, the public sees. Investigator Brown says the nature of gang membership is changing. It's trending towards elementary school aged kids becoming more violent. A lot of people tend to think that a gang is Bloods or Crips or it's a large nationwide gang. I think the uh, it's been trending towards um, hybrid gangs, um, hybrid street gangs, which don't necessarily have a, a certain color that they wear or a certain tattoo that they identify themselves with. They both say bank fraud is the top income producer for gangs in our area. If you can avoid mailing checks, if you can avoid having your personally identifiable information is, you know, just laying about, throwing it away, that is extremely valuable to gang members. In Augusta, Will Rio on your side. And the sheriff's office says they cannot do this alone. They do need the community support. The special operations unit says they're going to continue to meet with families, church groups, and their citizens' academy to try to educate the public about this issue that is growing. Happening now at the Georgia Capitol, thousands are pouring in to pay their respects to Georgia's first and only first lady, Rosalind Carter. As the former first lady lies in repose, people are saying their goodbyes. The Carter family motorcade has traveled throughout the state this morning, we were there as they left Phoebe Sumter Medical Center in Americas, right near Plains in South Georgia. The motorcade drove through Georgia Southwestern State University, where Rosalind went to college. Library staff saying they're receiving notes, letters, and encouragement from across the world looking back on her life and celebrating a life well lived. Well, it's kind of hard to not smile when I think about her. Um, Rosalind Carter is just so wonderful for us, and I think today is that time of reflection. It's time for our staff and the public to be together and not mourn her, but celebrate her.
This is the first day of a three-day ceremony. Tomorrow morning, the motorcade will travel to Emory University for a service at a church on campus there. President Biden will be there. Former President Jimmy Carter is also expected to attend tomorrow's memorial service for his late wife, according to his grandson. That'll be a very special occasion there. Well, it's going to be getting much colder outside this weekend. The deeper we get into winter, the urgency to help the homeless becomes a 24-7 effort. Some city leaders have been calling to revisit a homelessness task force they approved two years ago to try to streamline funding to local groups who help the most with the cause. Craig Allison is checking in to see how well Augusta has been tackling the issue. A plan made as a COVID fix. Before the pandemic, homeless organizations in Augusta had the Coalition of Care, which pulled in federal funding to address homelessness. This fell apart in 2020, but with the help of the Homeless Task Force, this new plan approved in 2021 saw some federal funds come back to those groups. That was not even in place when the Homeless Task Force was founded and was part of the reason for its founding. In that regard, it has been extremely successful. But the Salvation Army will be the first to say the problem is growing. Derek Dugan with the Center of Hope says that more than 1,000 people on the street and an increased need in winter months, they'll take all the help they can get. Brian Green attends the Homeless Task Force meetings and sees how big the issue has become. A lot of great people working uh, have uh, the, the, the community and the homeless at heart. It's just that we, this is a drastic situation, and we have to take drastic measures now. What we have been doing, quite frankly, is just not enough. Mr. Jordan Johnson has been asking to refocus on the task force plan, saying not enough has been done to address affordable housing and mental health resources. How are we going to uh, expect our homeless numbers to go down if the city isn't funding any types of initiatives to help those numbers decrease? And that is the issue that I have. But with a budget already in dispute, it could be a while before the city puts any more money towards the issue. In Augusta, Craig Allison on your side. And one of the goals for the homeless organizers is a permanent shelter open day and night, every day. And Commissioner Jordan Johnson says we're just around the corner from breaking ground on affordable housing for a new tiny home village. Okay, in less than an hour, Aiken will have a brand new mayor. Teddy Milner will be sworn in, replacing Mayor Rick Osmond in a meeting starting at 7 o'clock. Osmond's been mayor since 2015, and Milner becomes the city's fourth mayor in the last 66 years. She'll also be Aiken's first female mayor. We plan to be there live for that transfer of power over on NBC 26 News at 7 o'clock. Coming up here in sports, two of the biggest SEC powerhouses will meet again on the SEC championship stage for the first time since 2021. Kirby Smart, Coach Smart, talking about going head-to-head -head with Bama one more time when we come back. Big game later this week, and we're expecting cold temps over the next couple of days and then rain showing up as we close out into the weekend on we'll that full forecast next. Happening right now, we're kicking off the Christmas season in Johnston, and look who has arrived, the big man himself, on a very busy night in his season. But tonight, the city's hosting their tree lighting ceremony. Live look at all the fun. You can catch performances by church choirs. There's food. There's crafts. So a great night, and it looks like the weather is going to hold out. I think he's got treats in the bag. It looks like treats in the bag to like me. the place to be right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he brought some of that cold air with him from the North Pole. We got some pretty chilly temperatures in store the next few days, but uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed the weekend. Nightline Sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. All right, every week for the past 12 weeks, give or take, the dogs have been chopping down the tree one by one, focused on what's right in front of them, not behind them, and certainly not too far off into the future. And there is no bigger week than this for the dogs. The Southeast Showdown, sponsored by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. The road to the SEC Championship has had its potholes. On offense, they've at times lost Lad McConkey and Brock Bauer, sometimes both, like we saw last Saturday again. On defense, Julian Humphrey and JDJ, both who are important statues in the backfield, have been out or hurt. But it's what they've managed in spite of that, losing key players, at times giving up explosive plays because of it, but still keeping a 29-game win streak alive. I mean, it's just the, we tell the truth. I mean, uh... The truth is not always criticism. I mean, the truth is the truth. Um, and we were very honest. When guys play well, we tell them. And when they don't, we tell them. And uh, sometimes it's okay to not play well if the, uh, the person whipped you and, 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 and played better than you. Or we, we talk about the intangibles when we, we go through the game. We talk about the things we can control. 
And it's feeding into the locker room center. Cedric Van Pran says the team really flipped the switch the minute Georgia Tech got over. Every little mistake counts. Everything is magnified. And any of those things will come back to haunt you in this game. A critical deadline right around the corner for Toys for Tots. And organizers say they need your help now more than ever. First alert radar. Well, at Thanksgiving behind us, the countdown is on to Christmas. Back in October, Toys for Tots started their annual campaign. When we checked in, they say they're seeing higher needs rather than wants on the list this year. Taylor Martin looks to see if that's still the case. With Christmas quickly approaching, the Toys for Tots warehouse in Augusta is still full of half-full boxes of toys and empty boxes. This year, over 1,200 families applied for toys, but that December 18th deadline for donations is quickly approaching, and they're still in need of your help. Leftover toys from last year and dozens of empty boxes line the walls. But I'm praying different that we do get enough so we'll be able to give every child something for Christmas. In past years, most applications only requested toys, but this year more families are asking for clothes too. And without clothing donations, some children may not get what they need. But we're toys for tots, so the only thing I can give them is a toy. The only way I can supply them with clothes and other items is through donations. They're asking you to take a moment this holiday season and think of the children who, without you, won't have anything on Christmas morning. Please be mindful that our children are our future and they need us to show them some love at this point in life. If you'd like to donate, you can drop off unwrapped toys or clothing at the Toys for Tots warehouse on 15th Street at local retailers or online. And each child get three toys stock and stuff a book and a game we try to make it so they have a very good christmas so as you're out christmas shopping for friends and family consider adding a toy or two for children in need on the toys for tots list reporting in augusta taylor martin on your side and you can also donate those new unwrapped toys here in our lobby at Riverwatch at I-20, right near Costco during our business hours. We have a big bed in our lobby. We'd love to see it overflowing. We'd love to see it. Yes. yes. They just, this just in the search for the next superintendent for the Aiken County School District is about to begin. About an hour ago, community input meetings were announced for next Tuesday and Wednesday to get your thoughts on that. Tuesday's meeting will be at North Augusta, Silver Bluff, and Silver Bluff High Schools. Wednesday's meetings will be at the district office board and Wagner Sally High School. All of those start at 7 o'clock, and of course we'll have this on our website and let you know what happens. Well, if you're looking to get some yard work done later this week, we do have dry weather through Thursday, but I would let the breezy conditions tomorrow pass, and then you can rake up those leaves Wednesday and Thursday. Now look at that seven-day forecast just after the break. Hey, Jill, what's the matter? Man, this is name change. It's stressing me out. Everyone will know we still specialize in Medicare. Yeah, I know that, but what about this? Are you 64.com? Well, we are going to see some pretty cold mornings for the rest of the work week. We'll be down into the 30s, waking up early tomorrow. Then Wednesday and Thursday morning, those will be the coldest. Away from the city, we're expecting lows as low as 24 to 26 degrees both those days. You can see later to the week, our morning temps will really skyrocket back up into the mid-50s by Saturday. With those warmer temps, will come the chance for rain, though, so a heads up for that. If you are heading up to Clark's Hill the next couple of days, remember tomorrow is going to be chilly but also breezy. We're expecting good, steady northwest wind between 10 to 15 miles an hour and lake temps close to 60 degrees currently at 61 just outside of Plum Branch Yacht Club. We do have some cold dry conditions over the next several days hanging on to sunshine with high pressure moving in that is going to keep our highs in the 50s but warmer temps and the rain does return late in the week. I think people are ready for a cold snap that's the reaction I'm getting. I think it's cold enough. I'm, I'm good right here. You're okay just the way it is. Our next live update 7 o'clock on NBC 26. At the CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices to make for you and your family. You can see a lot of light in here. Cars are out there actually hydrating. Hey, Dad. Mama? She's on her way, bud. Hey, hi. 
charge you home. Stay safe. I will. Tell them to save me some. When others head in, we head out. Dominion Energy. Time to play America's favorite jackpot game. This is Powerball. Good evening, America. I'm Laura Johnson. Tonight we have another life-changing jackpot for you. It's worth an estimated $354.7 million. So get those tickets out. Let's play. That first number up is two. Followed by the number 61. Tonight we're going to meet the lucky 30 who won $1 million playing Powerball. Now for the rest of those numbers, we've got 38, 66, rounding it out with 21. Your Powerball number tonight, good luck everyone, is 12 and your power play multiplier is 2. Let's take a look at those numbers one last time. Remember, there are multiple ways to win. We'll see you back here Wednesday night. Good night, everyone. Live from Augusta, we're watching News 1226 at 11. Good evening. It's official. The city of Aiken has a new mayor tonight. Teddy Milner sworn in just a few hours ago during a city council meeting. She's taken the reins from former Mayor Rick Osmond, who's held, held that role since 2015. And Mayor Milner is also making history tonight as the first woman to win the seat. Nick Vila live in the studio for us. And Nick, you were there. How is she feeling? It's a pretty big milestone for Aiken. Yeah, she's excited to take over and start her journey serving the city of Aiken. Following her election win, she's been preparing to finally be sworn in and no longer be mayor-elect, but instead, it's just now mayor. <laughs> Cheers for a new leader taking over. Speechless. <laughs> With plans to get to work, they won. I'd like to see infrastructure be improved in the town. I'd love to see um, police uh, salaries increase in the town. I'd like to see the buildings downtown renovated that are in disrepair. In a room full to see the transfer of power in the mayor's seat. Something that's only happened four times over the last six decades in the city of Aiken. And the first ever female mayor in Aiken, too. I just put one foot forward every day and I took every day as it came. And I worked hard in my, my group that helped me during this campaign. And there was no way I would have ever been able to do it without them. Standing ovations for the new face, but also cheers for what Rick Osmond done for the city. What a great honor. You know, I, I went into this just a, a normal guy. We were able to do a lot of things for the city of Aiken moving it forward. I know that momentum will continue and a lot of great things will happen. It's been um, a labor of love and an honor to serve the city of Aiken. Now Osmond hands the gavel over to Milner to lead the city in her direction. I'm going to run my first meeting, so uh, we'll see how that goes afterwards. <laughs> I'll give you my own critique. She says that she leads with integrity, and it officially starts now. And let's go to work and improve our city. And Anki, Anki. Ankin Councilman Ed Gerardo from District 4 was appointed as Mayor Pro Tem tonight and will serve that role until 2025. A big night in Aiken and a huge crowd on hand for all yeah. of that, the outgoing and the incoming That's all That's right, time. so big changes and we'll see the direction the city takes. To weather now, now, as uh, we say that sorry? together, we're going to add a lot of from Beach Island. Showing up Wednesday in just about 10 minutes. Two more teens are being charged in the shooting death of a 14-year-old, bringing the total number of arrests to five. 15-year-old Rayshawn Coleman and 14-year-old Radarius Coleman were arrested and charged with murder, gang charges, and more on Friday. They joined three other teens in the case arrested last week. Because of their ages, their mugshots are not available, but the GBI says 14-year-old Jonathan Johnson died on the 18th after being shot in the head on Anderson Avenue. Law enforcement is not saying if any more arrests are on the way, but the GBI is still investigating. A four-year-old boy from Richmond County has died after deputies say he shot himself with an unsecured gun earlier this month. The coroner says Zyke Ryans died Sunday in the hospital. The shooting happened at the child's home on Murphy Road back on November the 12th. Both Ladarin Ryans and Brittany Ryans are now in custody for that death. And both face murder charges and five counts of second-degree cruelty to children. Some in Aiken questioning safety tonight after shots are fired in the middle of the afternoon. That's all happening yesterday. It happened at the Walmart on Whiskey Road in Aiken. Aiken Public Safety says three suspects fired shots at a driver in the parking lot. 
both the suspects and victim were gone before police arrived. Later, one person showed up at the Aiken Regional Medical Center with a gunshot wound. Aiken Public Safety says they could be connected to the case. In the aftermath of this, though, some say their sense of security is starting to fade away. Almost everybody in Aiken has to go to Walmart, but you have to fear for your life now just to buy your milk. We shouldn't have to be scared just to provide for our family. Walmart did release a statement saying the safety of its associates and customers are a top priority. Just five months ago, though, a teen was shot inside that same Walmart, seemingly at random. She was injured, but she did survive. More emotional reunions between freed hostages and their Carolina high school today left one student dead and another in the hospital. The stabbing happened in Raleigh in the school gym. Authorities say there was a fight involving several students there. One student is in custody tonight. The parents of students at the high school there say there are no metal detectors. The high school has canceled classes for tomorrow as they continue to investigate that deadly stabbing. A highly anticipated court case in Atlanta getting underway today involving music artist Young Thug. Prosecutors kicked things off alleging the artist, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams, and his co-defendants are gang members. They're being charged under the RICO Act. The defense argues there is no gang, just the artist's record label. Earlier this month, there was debate over whether Williams' rap lyrics could be used against him in court. Prosecutors argued lyrics describing illegal activity are equivalent to statements of fact, while the defense argued that it was artistic and performative in nature. In the end, the judge overseeing the case ruled that some lyrics would be accepted as evidence. Former President Jimmy Carter expected to attend the memorial service. Cold and dry over the next several days, and then some rain showing up later into the week. We'll have that full forecast next. Tomorrow, the Supreme Court will hear arguments about double jeopardy in criminal prosecutions with ties to Georgia. Bring it all down for you, coming up. We know you get up early. That's why we get up even earlier. Finding out the things you want to know. Rain? Well, that can mess up your whole day. I'll tell you what to expect outside, on the way home, and at night if the kids have a game. In the morning, we've got one job, making sure you've got no surprises on your way to work. If it happens overnight or breaks early in the morning, we're going to tell you about it. When that alarm goes off, get up and get out with News 1226 this morning on your side. There are trucks. Highs back into the 60s. Okay, Riley, thanks. They call it double jeopardy, and that will be front and center tomorrow at the U.S. Supreme Court. The question, can a criminal defendant be prosecuted again for a similar crime after they were previously acquitted? Josh Rutlenberg has a preview of the case. In 2017, Damian McElrath from Cobb County, Georgia, was prosecuted on three different charges in the killing of his adoptive mother. Court documents say he stabbed her more than 50 times, something he did not dispute. However, the jury delivered a split verdict. It found McElrath not guilty by reason of insanity on the equivalent of a first-degree murder charge, but also guilty but sane on two lesser charges. His attorney appealed, taking the case to the Georgia Supreme Court. The justices ruled it irreconcilable, vacated the verdicts, and said a new trial could take place on all charges. That is what we believe is a double jeopardy violation. McElrath petitioned his case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Richard Simpson, who represents McElrath, concedes Georgia can retry his client on the two lesser charges he was convicted of, but not the most serious charge in which McElrath was acquitted. Because once one jury heard all the evidence and came back not guilty, that's the end of it as far as that charge uh, is concerned. The Georgia Attorney General's office declined our interview request. In its court filing, the AG argues the ruling is unlikely to happen again, and this case would not be the right one for the top court to review Georgia law. McElrath's attorney says he fears a loss for his client could lead to a life sentence and an opening for states to appeal criminal acquittals. And we're yet on how long the Supreme Court will hear arguments in this case, but the Supreme Court releases a majority of its decisions in mid-June. It's got a minor try to stop him. Check out this wild ride. We're in a police car following a forklift with a 12-year-old at the wheel in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Police say he saw it parked outside a middle school, decided to take it for a spin. One vehicle, the vehicle was unlocked with the key hidden away in the cab. But this video goes on like this for about an hour, hitting speeds of 10 to 20 miles an hour. And that's not all he hit. Ten cars were damaged Ooh. along the way, but no injuries. The 12-year-old will be spending some time in a juvenile detention center there. Ooh.
And South Carolina man is accused of stealing $80,000 in chicken. The 55-year-old suspect is a driver for Pilgrim's Pride and was instructed to deliver more than 40,000 pounds of chicken to two Georgia locations. But instead, Sumter County deputies say the suspect then turned around and sold thousands of pounds of the chicken himself. Authorities say this isn't the first time chicken has been stolen. They caught the suspect during a traffic stop. He faces up to 10 years in prison on charges of breach of trust with fraudulent intent. So I had a major historical monument here in Georgia about to get a big facelift. Just ahead, we'll take you there to show you what's changing. And as we had to break a live look at New York City and your winning lottery numbers. SRP Spotted sticker and get $100. That's right, it's that easy. Get your SRP Spotted sticker or magnet from any SRP location and you could be spotted and win $100. Follow us on Facebook for even more chances to win with Spot Me SRP. Good things are happening at SRP. An historic landmark in Atlanta undergoing renovations. If you are hoping to see Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth home in Sweet Auburn, you're going to have to wait a couple of years. Brittany Ford gives us a last look inside ahead of the long-awaited project. 501 Auburn Avenue is an address that draws people from all over the world to Atlanta. To imagine that he was really living in it for the experience of walking through. The childhood home of one of the greatest civil rights leaders of all time. Free at last! Free at last! Thanks to all the We are free at last! Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So when people walk through this house, they actually walk it back into time. They walk it back to 1930s because everything is preserved. But this is the room that they call the birth room. A chance to see inside the historic two-story Queen Anne style home. And people come from all over just to see where Dr. King was born, because his impact is universal. We'll be off limits for the next two years. We've been in the works of trying to figure out how we're going to stabilize the structure and fix the structure. Marty Smith with the National Park Service says the home purchase in 1909 by King's grandparents is undergoing long overdue rehabilitation work. We've been coming in doing work to ensure it's structurally sound. They're going to put the foundation, put this area on cement. And the home, still filled with character, will be completely emptied out as a part of this major facelift. Some of these items that have been here since Dr. King called it home. Well, that's the piano that Dr. King played on. Um, that's the original piano. So Monopoly was actually Dr. King's favorite game. Preserving what will be experienced and admired by generations to come. Also tonight, it was supposed to be the trip of a lifetime, but it will not be happening. Life at Sea Cruises says it had to cancel its three-year inaugural cruise because they don't have a ship. The voyage was originally set to depart from Istanbul November 1st, but after being postponed twice, the cruise is officially off. Those passengers are now out hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some have nowhere to go. They sold or rented their homes for this round-the-world experience. But Life at Sea Cruises says it's working to refund those passengers, but it may take a few months. Yes, that's the wildest story. Can you believe it? It's crazy. They didn't have that ship lined up. Yeah, it's pretty important. Uh, the numbers are still being crunched, but experts project more than 71 million Americans participated in Cyber Monday deals today. According to Adobe Analytics, consumers were expected to spend a record $12 billion today. It's up more than 6% from last year. One of the businesses expected to see the most purchases. Of course, you guessed it, Amazon. The tech giant says its fulfillment centers are expecting the number of shipments to double. 
With six games to go in the regular season, the Panthers fire their head.